Being an astronaut these days is very different from in the early days. I mean, the uh, early Mercury astronauts, uh, you know, John Glenn, Alan Shepard, and in other countries, you know, Yuri Gagarin in China, Yang Niwei, uh, they were all celebrities on a personal basis. Uh, you know, people recognize John Glenn when he walks down the street. Being an astronaut is still a rather unique profession so that that when I tell people that I'm an astronaut you know being an astronaut is still something special but you know as Jeffrey Hoffman I'm not a personal celebrity and and that's all to the good I mean I, I don't particularly care to be <laughs> you know bothered when I go down the street but on the other hand I'm I'm very happy that people still by and large tend to be excited at the idea of space flight to be interested in what I've done as an astronaut because the space program now is, is supported by the public and uh, if the public loses interest ultimately that's to the detriment of future space exploration. It's an interesting question of, of what I was expecting for my future when, when I was here as a uh, uh, postdoctoral researcher. I guess I always assumed that I would have an academic career um, go on to do astronomical research. Uh, never really imagined that I would become an astronaut and of course I'm coming back here not to lecture about astronomy but about human space flight. So did I ever expect that I'd be possibly coming back to give lectures? The answer would certainly be yes, but I guess I would have expected that the lectures would have been about high energy astrophysics and instead here I am talking about human space flight. When I came to work in the Lester X-ray Astronomy Group, it was already recognized as, as a world-class group, even though it was rather small, and, and that has only uh, continued to improve. So uh, I found when I went back to the States, my experiences here at Lester put me in very, very good stead with the uh, other research work that I was doing. And also, when I applied to NASA to be an astronaut, they're, they're looking for people who can actually build things, repair things, solve problems. And uh, I was the project scientist here for two sounding rocket experiments. One of them we took down to Australia, another one we took down to Spain. And, and that was really great uh, preparation, not just for future work in astronomy research, but I think for the general work that I've done as an, a as an astronaut, it, it put me in very good stead, probably helped me get selected in the first place. So I'm, I'm really very thankful for the experiences I had here at Leicester. They, they have enriched my life and, and I'm very grateful. Of course, one of the questions that students often ask is, you know, what can I do afterwards? And of course, one of the options is to continue in astronomical research. and. You know, you get a degree out of the, the group here and, and you're well qualified to do that. But it's also true that if you come out uh, with a physics degree and you've worked with some of the instrumentation which is integral to all of the research that is done here, you've got a lot of background in computer technology and electronics engineering and that actually puts you in a good position to do a great many things. My youngest son did a degree in physics back in the United States, uh, decided he didn't actually want to go on in physics per se, uh, but he became a robotics engineer and that's what he's doing for a living now. So a, a good physics degree with uh, a lot of laboratory experience working with computers and electronics can send you in a lot of different directions. I opened a new telescope at the uh, Leicester University Observatory out in Oadby um, and it's really a, a fabulous telescope. It's, it's a 20-inch uh, reflecting telescope of a quality, I think, unmatched by any student facility uh, in the UK. I, I think we can probably say that, that astronomy students at Leicester now have the best facilities locally on, on, the, uh, you know, on the site. Uh, compared to, to any students in, in the country. It's really important, you know, if, if you're going to eventually go on to use world-class huge telescopes, to understand how telescopes work and to get some hands-on experience. And there's no better way to do that than to have a locally available telescope. Now, of course, you can access that telescope now from your 
a dormitory room or over the internet, but the nice thing is you can also go out to the observatory and, and actually see it in operation and, and get a feel for what it's like being a working astronomer, and, and that really puts you in a very good stead no matter what kind of research you do in the future. I'm very enthusiastic about space tourism, and, and I hope that it's successful. We, we're actually living in a, a rather extraordinary time in, in that regard because there's a whole generation now of billionaires who, who made lots of money on various um, high-tech enterprises in the, in the 90s, but who grew up in the Apollo era, and they're space nuts, and they want to develop space for private enterprise, make it possible uh, for lots of people to share the experience. It's a fantastic experience and I'm convinced that if we're able to make it possible for large numbers of people to travel to space safely and, and of course affordably, and, and of course what affordably means depending, depends on your annual income, but there's a lot of wealthy people out there who will be some of the early space tourists, just like you know when you look at transatlantic uh, air travel. Uh, my parents told me that when they flew over from the U.S. to Europe in the 1950s, the equivalent cost would be like ten, fifteen thousand dollars in today's money. It was very expensive, but you had more and more people do it, more and more airlines, competition, the development of technology, and, and now air travel is, is relatively cheap. And, and that's the hope for space travel. And, and I think that it actually uh, will have a significant impact on space exploration in, in the following sense. NASA spends almost a third of its entire budget maintaining the infrastructure to launch people into low Earth orbit and take care of them when they get up there. If that infrastructure could be provided and maintained by private industry in the, and, and predominantly paid for by the private sector, and if NASA could then buy those services at the marginal cost of, of uh, the operation, then it would be a lot less expensive and NASA would have a lot more money to spend on exploration, which is what I'd really like to see NASA doing in the future rather than just running a transportation service. There's a lot of uncertainties now about the future of human spaceflight. Uh, right now, uh, we have the International Space Station, which is really the, the central point of space flight for uh, the Western world, for Russia. Uh, of course, the, the Chinese are also getting involved in human space flight, but at the moment, they're, they're doing that pretty much on, on their own. But I, I think, you know, looking ahead to the future, maybe they will also join this international partnership. So it's, it's very international, first of all. Um, and, and it is possible for uh, Europeans to take part in that. We have a European astronaut corps, and, and now we've just had a selection of the first uh, British uh, astronaut to join the European astronaut corps. So there are possibilities. Uh, the space station will be operated mainly to do scientific research. Um, we don't know how long it will keep going, but certainly I would think at least for the, for the next decade. And, and after that, I think it really depends on how successful it's been and, and what sort of results have come out of it. What I hope is that uh, there will also be an international partnership to go beyond Earth orbit with exploring uh, deep space and going out into the solar system. Um, you know, if, if I were a young st student now, that's, that's what I would be looking forward to in the future. It'll be incredibly exciting. Um, whether our generation will make that possible or, or whether we're going to have to wait longer, we, we still don't know because there's a lot of economic and technical issues to be resolved. But uh, that's my hope for the future and, and I think it's definitely worth working towards. And so there's, there's a lot to be excited about and, and many things to, to look forward to.